Today on Real Life, handling a budget in tough times. Craig and Janet partial on what's going on in Washington and the world. Arlene Williams is at home in the kitchen kicking off football season. And as always, we will be praying for your miracle. Today on Real Life.
Amen. Amen. The everlasting God. I'm Don Black, and welcome to Real Life with my beautiful bride, Terry. Hi. <laughs> this is real life. God loves you. Mm -hmm. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit empowers you, and the Bible is your guide to abundant living. Mm -hmm. Terry, this, this is our second program. Yes, it is. How'd you do and last night? Did last night. I was very tired, and I watched the show, and I saw... I just took a lot of notes, let's say. How about that? So, um, learning. This is a learning curve. Did you have fun? I did have fun. I really did. And everyone was awesome. The cast and the, uh, not, well, we're the cast and the rest of the people, <laughs> but the crew and everyone was really great. Very, very helpful and welcoming. So it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a lot of ministry yesterday on the program. That's right. As, mm -hmm. as, as the program ran through the day, lots of folks called in for prayer. And we want you to know that our prayer line is always open. That's right. There's always somebody here 24 hours a day, seven days a week to pray with you. And you say, well, why do you have a prayer line open 24 hours a day? Because we care about you. That's right. And we want you to have that person that you can call, stand in agreement with about an issue in your life mm -hmm. that you need a prayer, an answer right. for, a miracle for. The number's on the screen, 888-665-4483. Mm -hmm. Feel free to call at any time. That's right. And mm -hmm. that's why we are here. And there's social media connections too. You, the telephone is a great connection point, but you can also join us on face, Facebook and also in Twitter. So if that's, if that's the way you connect, then please take, take the time and reach out mm -hmm. and connect with us on Twitter and on mm -hmm. Facebook. We'd love to have you. And we want to pray for you. So remember that about it. It's, Don's not just saying that. We are truly, really interested in your life we want to see how God works in your life, and we want to pray for you. So pick up the phone and have someone pray for you. Well, we have two exciting guests with us, two, two separate kinds of, of uh, guests with us today. And the first, our first guest is going to talk about money. And we never, we never have any issues at home with bud budgeting and money. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. Um, no, uh, yeah, it's, oh. it's sure. Well, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, budget is just a challenge. What's that word budget mean? I'm not quite... I, I don't know. We have two different types, don't we? <laughs> Mine and his, and then the real one, I guess. So <laughs> we're going to... I'm looking forward to hearing what Michael has to say. Well, I am too. <laughs> I, I am too. It's, 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 it's interesting to, to hear about how to manage the money, how to manage your resources. Absolutely. So if you've got questions about resources and money and how mm -hmm. money fits into your life, this is a great place for you to be today. Absolutely. Uh, we, have, we have also Greg and Janet Parcells with us today oh, from Washington. Great. And awesome. that, that's also what's in the headlines is we're going to talk mm -hmm. about Syria. We're going to talk about all the things that's going on in the headlines that you may be concerned about. Mm -hmm. The theme for today is if you have a, a fear, if you're uncertain about what's going to happen in your life, we want to invite you to come and pray with us. This is, this is uh, why we're here for you. That's right. But Speaking of money, we went out onto the streets and we asked the people in Pittsburgh, what about budgets? <laughs> uh, not as well as I should. <laughs> um, I budget by um, tracking all my expenses. I don't spend as much as they send me, so I don't really worry about the budget. I don't. <laughs> And I probably should. I just, honestly, I just spend. Um, but I really don't budget. No, I don't. I pay mostly just my living expenses. Yeah. I don't really have a set budget. I just kind of, you know. I just do. I mean, I know my limits. I know how much to spend on. And sometimes you get to do cutbacks, like say, if you want to eat pierogies at the park, you gotta, you know, cut back on something else. You just... How do I budget? Um... Honestly, I kind of keep track of here. It's uh, it's kind of a sad art, really. Um, I kind of do it in an Excel spreadsheet, so trying to save. I'd say if they, if they don't get stressed out over debt, then go ahead, go get in debt if you don't feel stressed out over it. Some people run up debts, they don't care. 
Some people run up a much debt, they don't care. I think maybe that happens a lot. Yeah. We're so glad Michael Puehler is here with us. God bless you. Thank you, you. Thank you, Thank you for being part right. of the God program. I appreciate Thank it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, what's that about? Why, why do people do that? Isn't, isn't that ironic that it ends up on just debt and let's just That's sort right. of go with the flow? And mm -hmm. uh, it, it's really hard to get people to talk about budgeting. It's right. not a natural process for us. But the, if, if I couldn't leave you with anything other thought today, it's that is the emphasis of your budget and your money on the Lord's resources or your own. It's almost a selfish thing. If I just go with this with total disregard of what the Lord's provided me, would you head off to Cleveland today and budget yourself 20 minutes to make the trip knowing it's a three hour drive? No, you wouldn't do it. Yet in our lives, we have really no roadmap at all. I see it every single day. And the Bible speaks endlessly about budgeting. The Bible teaches us to be wise. It teaches us that we can prosper and tithe and give because of the proper use of our resources. But we, the world pulling you a whole other way, it really doesn't want you going in that direction. Absolutely. Well, when you, when you watch our own federal government and the way we spend money, sure, isn't it easy just to say, well, if it's good for the government, why can't I do it too? It is. And most of us have never really had any financial planning from young. The schools really teach very little about it. The burdens on our home and our church to help people to understand it. And it's a challenge. Look, money, resources, need, want, struggling with all that. Let me share one Bible verse, if I could, with sure. you, please. I want to go to Proverbs 21, verse 5, where it says, The plans of the diligent lead to profit mm -hmm. as surely as haste leads to poverty. And oh, wow. isn't that the truth? You know, the haste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we are, when you watch television, mm -hmm. everything is, you need this right now. Make Absolutely. this decision. One theme I could express to someone is 70% of the time, if you do not make the purchase right now, if you delay it, you will not make it. Mm. Don't do it the very first time. Walk away, reevaluate it. You, for everything, do you recommend, like, or just for major purchases? Well, it, it varies, and it varies <laughs> with the couple involved. Yeah, you know, I tell okay. people you should have a number in mind that you would never, you would never spend more than two hundred dollars without discussing it together, or whatever mm -hmm. that is in your family. Yeah, but it should be a number that should do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in budgeting, where we have to start is we have to know how much income we have. Mm -hmm. We have a tendency to forget about taxes, so right. let's keep track of our net. Mm -hmm. But focus on the expense side. Mm -hmm. Let's start with our checkbook. Let's make us a list. Mm -hmm. of every place our money goes. Mm -hmm. You'll be stunned to write out your checkbook. Do it for two months, not one. The reason for that is you might pick December. December's <laughs> not a typical it's month, not, okay? No, but let's no. lay out what has to be paid, our mm -hmm. mortgage, our insurance, what is the spontaneous things, what are the things that we have some choice about. Mm -hmm. When I lecture, I often tell people, find one expense every month that you can make go away and get rid of it. Unless it's flowers for your bride, then pick a different one, okay? Oh, that could be Don't monthly. Don't go along with Wait, that. Well, well, monthly, monthly. Well, it could be, but let's talk about our strategy when we go. First of all, mm -hmm. we need some commitment. Mm -hmm. We need the Lord's help. We pray mm -hmm. about our finances. Lord, help me do this. Mm -hmm. We don't just go off winning any about it. We really are committed to doing something about it, okay? Secondly, realistic goals. And I, realistic is the magic word here. Um, I would like to have a third and a fourth and a second home and a boat and all that, but that's not realistic. That's not where I am in my life and that isn't going to happen. Yet invariably I deal with folks that their goals, if they have goals at all, are very unrealistic. Mm. To be fair, most people today are, it's just a dogfight to survive. It mm. is really tough. Mm. It is really tough. Well, how, how do people get into the place where it's like that? How, do you, how does a family find itself in that dogfight when they're both, maybe both have good jobs. Yeah, well, it's a combination of things. A lot of times it's just a lack of discipline. If you never had a budget, didn't have a roadmap, when we get down to it, you say, was this a roadmap that God, if, if the Lord looked down on my roadmap of my spending, mm -hmm. would he be happy with what he sees? Mm -hmm. Or is this budget built about me mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. I can go and take from it? Mm -hmm. And so it's so important to lay out the expenses, prioritize them. We have things that we must pay every month, no matter what. But yet there's all kinds of things that come up. Life comes up with all kinds of stuff. We, we're going to run out of time on this segment, but I, I don't want to end it without taking it to the, a question about tithing and, and money Amen. for the kingdom. Amen. Because I believe that's where a lot of people get in trouble. They don't understand the... 
when we give back to the Lord what He has given us, mm -hmm. He multiplies it so many times. Tithing must be in the budget, and it's at the beginning of the budget, mm -hmm. not at the end when we say, what are the scraps that are left? That isn't mm -hmm. how it works. Mm -hmm. And that's the secret, I think, to success of, of really getting a handle on your money is by giving God the money that He has required of Amen. us. Amen. Got to be a part of it. Wish we could have more time. That's we'll have right. you back. We'll Thank talk some more, get into that. more depth about that. But at, 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 this, at this point in the program, let's, let's, let's take a, a break. And thanks, thanks again for coming. Thanks God for bless you. Me. I appreciate it. Thank we'll be right back. Coming. Keep after that budget. For more real life tips on budgeting, go to the real life money section on our website at ctvn.org. Coming up on Real Life, we join Arlene Williams in the at-home kitchen for a seasonal favorite. And a little later, Craig and Janet Parshall join us to talk about what's going on in Washington and the issues affecting your family. Coming up on Real Life. Listen to the words of our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, on April 30th, 1863. He knew our country needed to turn its eyes to our Heavenly Father in revered prayer and thanksgiving. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace, and we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all of these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. May our eyes be opened and let us pray and fast for our nation. We have so much to be thankful for, but we have much also to repent of. Pray for this nation and pray for God's mercy. Welcome back to Real Life, and I'm in the kitchen with Arlene, and we are at home. Yay! Yay! And look family, look at the brand new kitchen. Is this beautiful or what? I love the color. I love the, I mean, just totally different look. We're part of the real life set and we're so glad you joined us this morning. We're gonna be here every Tuesday making all kinds of good things. Good. And you know, people don't always like change. Okay. Some yes. people fight it, some people like That's it. That's right. And you know, we go through life and it is about change. But I'm so thankful that one thing is consistent we don't have to ever worry about. Yes. God's love. Oh, amen. He never changes. He sure does. And Malachi 3 6 says, I'm the Lord and I change not. So if you're dealing with something today and you're wondering, what am I going to do? Fear is a big thing today. We're talking about that. Don't you dare worry. He's got it covered. Amen. All right. What a great word to start this yeah, with. Yeah, I love that. Okay, okay, you know what we're going to do? Yes. It's football season. It is. <laughs> And you have boys. I do have boys. And they boys. love football, I'm sure. And they love food. <laughs> <laughs> well, who doesn't? That's right. Okay, I got one of these big bread rings. Oh, cool. We're going to make a football hoagie. Yeah. So this is a big bread ring that we have. I just cut it in half, the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And we hollowed out the bottom portion just a little bit because you're going to make, you know what I don't like about um, hoagies in general? Yeah. Is when you take a bite, the lettuce and everything's falling out. Yeah, so that's true. So we chopped it up, and I want you to add some onion. 
Do, okay. Yeah, just all, add the onion in there. Okay. Portions aren't important because you know you're just going to fill this in. Okay. And mix that up really well. It's all nice right. to have a helper here helping me today. Oh, good. Appreciate I'm that. Glad I'm, yeah, good. <laughs> do your boys like hoagies? Um, Yes, they do. Boys They're, like everything. They like, yeah, you're right. They yeah, do like everything. They do. The bigger, the better. They would oh, like yeah. a 12 inch, or they would love this round yeah, circle. Yeah, something different. Well, okay. you know what? Go so, ahead and start. Wait, put your put the dressing on it first. Put the dressing About in half here. Half of the bottle. Yeah. Okay. And this is zesty. It's zesty Italian. Italian. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and I'm just going to start. And this is basically layering. And you can use any kind of meats, any kind of cheeses. We just decided that we're going to go with the authentic. Hoagie, which has a cup of coal. Are you familiar with Italian? I'm not. That's why I was going to ask okay. you what the meat. This is what the meats. This were. is a cured ham. Okay. And it's a little different, and you can see it's got pepper on it. So, it's. Oh, uh, yeah. and you want to slice it kind of on the thin side. You don't like big pieces of ham. Would it be spicy? A little bit okay. because it's got the pepper, but right. it's not overly spicy. So. Okay. Tell me. Um. Or, or is this? Am, do you want me to? Yeah. Push start this filling around? in. That looks okay. great. That looks great. Okay. And. We're gonna just we start just to layer okay. any variety that you like. So, is there a reason you put the lettuce and the onion on one side and the meat yeah. and the cheese on the other? Now, if I were making this and this was already done, mm -hmm. I would start to layer the meat and stuff on top of the of the lettuce. lettuce. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because this is gonna be a challenge to put it all together. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, but we can do it. Oh, Because we yes. gotta marry these both up, you know. So. Okay. And you know, when you have time, you can make it pretty, you know, you can have the, the, the cheese and the meat overlap, so it looks nice. This is great if you're having a lot of people over. Okay. You're thinking, what are we gonna serve? Or an impromptu, you know, this is this is football season, just started. Oh, does, it looks good. Thank you, now does it looks matter good. on layering, like how you layer no. things? But you want a meat and then a cheese, and a okay. meat and a cheese. Okay. I think we're, you're are probably, you want me to add more? No, I think you're good right there. Okay, I think cool. that's good. Okay. okay, you wanna help me start to put the hammer on? Sure. Here, I'll bring it over to you. Okay. I'll bring it over to you. All right. Let's get rid of this. We'll swap it out. There we okay. go. Okay. And right. I, I have to ask. Put your, I've never. This is really thin. Is this the chip this ham? Is, no, no, no. This oh. is baked ham chip. Baked ham chip. Is that yeah, a? So uh, you're, a Pits, you're a Pittsburgher. You know about that? Yeah. Uh, chip ham. Ha -ha. That's right. Nobody. Uh, it, we've lived in Tennessee, and no one Nobody seems knows to know it, what huh? this is no. about. You know. No, that's true. Okay, so we're just. What we're going to do is just keep layering and layering. Okay. And it really, you know, it's up to your discretion what, as I said, what kind of cheeses. But you could have what we're going to put today with it. We have some Doritos and some hummus. <gasps> oh, that's good. That's a good, good. combination. Yes. People love hummus. And, okay. you know, if you only want to use three kinds of cheese or you only want to use two kinds, it's mm -hmm. up to you. Whatever your needs are, okay. that's what you can do. Well, I noticed you mixed the dressing and the lettuce and the onion. Right. So is that better to do than just put it over top of the meat and yeah, the Yeah, because, cheese? you know, it doesn't get a chance to soak in. It'll soak yeah. into the bread, make the bread a little bit soft. You could even toast that if you wanted to. What a good idea. Yeah, so that it would hold some of that. that. And sometimes, okay. you know, all the all the seasoning and the moisture is at the top of it and the bottom's dry. Yeah. So it doesn't taste good. And it doesn't sink through. It's right. not very good. Yeah, you okay. want to put some of that all around. Okay, and now what kind of cheese is this? That's Monterey Jack. That's two, Monterey Jack. Oh, and then do I just put the whole slice whole on or do you want me just, to cut it? Just the, the whole way around. Like that? And okay. you know what, you want to make sure that it's all covered to the oh, edges. Oh, oh, oh. Because everybody, everybody has to get a little bite see? Oh, okay. <laughs> so what team, uh, I know you're not moved here yet, but what team are you uh, rallying for? <laughs> if you say Tennessee, I'm, well, I know we're going to be... Uh, Tennessee doesn't have the best record. No, they you don't. You know, they don't. Um, before, we tend to be Atlanta Falcons fans. Okay. Um, my family is. It's just we had lived in uh, Atlanta for a while. Okay. So. Yeah, but when I you grew move up around different parts of the country, it's hard to, your loyalties absolutely. are... Absolutely. But, I mean, I'm still a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And sure. So, I, you know, I, so when the Atlanta Falcons and the Pittsburgh Steelers, if they, do they ever play together? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Maybe so. Yeah, I, I but really, I, I would root I, for... Yeah, now let's just put so. some tomatoes around the oh, edge. Well, what, and it doesn't matter, tomato, are these just the these are beef like, eaters? Yeah, if or? you can get the, the nice big beef steaks... I okay. understand you have a garden. Do you have tomatoes like this in your garden? The I did, but the deer pretty much enjoyed it. They certainly it. have enjoyed themselves this year. <laughs> they, they have. I haven't had done too well. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to need your assistance. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. Let's wipe our hands on this right okay. here. Okay. Should I move this too? Uh, yeah, that would okay. be good. You can put it back there. That's All right. great. And you can even move that bottle. This bottle. Uh huh. Okay. And here's what we're going to do. You're okay. going to take, you take the bottom part and I'll take the top part and we're just going to put it right on top. 
You have much faith in me. I do. I know you can do it. Because we're just going to hold it together. Okay. Watch. This is called teamwork. <laughs> That's all right. We did okay. pretty good. Not too Excuse bad. Me. Okay. Yeah, we just tuck it oh in. Oh, my gosh. Tuck it in. Okay. Look at that sandwich we just wow. made. Doesn't that look good? Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, that is now, gorgeous. What we're going to do is cut it. Okay. And then we're going to put toothpicks. Did you, make, did you make this sandwich? I, she I, did. I she helped, sort, she, but she I sort of helped. butchered it when we uh, no, turned no, it didn't. over. Okay, no. thank no, you. No, 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 you so did. Arlene, what's the name? What, what do you call this? This is called the Jumbo Football Hoagie. Oh. So. This is a man sandwich. It is. And you know what? But you can cut it in big pieces or you can cut okay. it in little pieces. So if somebody um, doesn't want too much. Give me a little piece. But what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. And there's. There. Yeah. Okay. Take, the, take a toothpick and put it right there. Okay. And then right. what we'll do, we'll give Don a piece. Okay, here. And if you want to grab one of those plates yeah. over there, Grab Dawn. it the whole way through? Yeah. Put it the whole way through? You mm -hmm. know, I'm left-handed, oh, so I, I probably am try I'm in, in your way. No, you're you not know? at all. Okay. Not at all. We'll just take those plates and, and we can put another toothpick in. That looks so yummy. And you know, it's nice because if you don't mm. want the... Is it good? Mm. It's good. Very good. Huh? Here. Hey, this is a Pittsburgh thing, Dawn. You know, it's very good. This is a Pittsburgh thing. You know, I like okay. what you were saying about... The no fear zone. Yeah, okay. no fear zone. Uh, you know, and we got to pray that for the Steelers. <laughs> I got a feeling they're in the fear. And I think some of the people in Pittsburgh are thinking, oh my goodness. But you know, when you know Christ, there is no fear. <gasps> There's it's just it. no fear. This looks delicious. It's nice, colorful, I like huh? this. Doesn't that I like it? What has good flavor to it? It's got now, a nice listen, flavor to it. If yes. you want this recipe and the ones that are going to be coming up over the next months, you're going to want to go to our website at ctvn.org. The recipes will be there. You can download them. They're yours. Mm. That'll be great. That will be just great. Okay, awesome. we need a couple of toothpicks. Oh, here. okay. Let's have a football party. Why yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and ladies, this, this, this is fantastic. Good. I think we've got some crew that might. Uh, oh, they'll devour it. It'll come in like, <laughs> oh, like yeah. a hurricane. Vultures. <laughs> thank you for cooking those. Sure. It's all you. over my mouth. Uh, no, I, I know you're enjoying it. Not it's to delicious. Okay. Good. Uh, we're we're going to take a, a break, okay. and we'll probably eat this whole, eat this whole sandwich Absolutely. in the break. We'll be Thanks right back. Thanks for helping me. Oh, I enjoy. For this or other real life recipes from Arlene Williams in the at home kitchen, visit our website at ctvn.org. Up next on Real Life, lively conversation with authors Craig and Janet Parshall. And a little later, your daily dose of inspiration with the seven minute word. In the 1950s, during the heavily industrial steel era of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Reverend Dr. Sam Shoemaker was a fixture in Pittsburgh's Calvary Episcopal Church. He had a passion to take the church into the steel mills and executive suites as well as to the hardworking folks of this industrial city. Dr. Shoemaker had high hopes for Pittsburgh's role in changing the U.S. In March of 1955, he said, I like to envision Pittsburgh as a city under God, so that God would be the same to Pittsburgh as steel is to Pittsburgh. The backlog of Christian conviction and belief in this city means more to it than all of the coal in the hills and all the steel in the mills. If these forces can be trained, united, and mobilized, Pittsburgh might become a spiritual pilot plant and example for America. Pittsburgh for Christ. Christ, hear our prayers and bless this land. Well, looky here. It's Lucy and Ethel in the prayer center. It sure looks like they're looking to have some fun. Uh-oh, looks like Ricky is worried that Lucy will always be talking on the phone or even chatting on the computer. Just look at Lucy and Ethel. They're having a blast praying for folks calling or chatting in. What will Ricky do now? But wait, Ricky is joining in too. Move over, Lucy and Ethel. Ricky wants to be a prayer partner at CTVN, answering prayer calls and splaining the love of God. Just look at Lucy and Ricky and Ethel. They're so happy hanging with the prayer partners at CTVN, working in the studio and praying on the phone or chatting on the computers to friends that call in needing a prayer. Do you want to join Lucy and Ethel and Ricky in the prayer center? You can have a great time splaining the love of God to those needing a prayer. Call us at 1-866-798-4104 and become a part of Cornerstone Television's prayer partners splaining the love of God.
Welcome back to Real Life. I'm still chewing on that sandwich. Mm, looks good. <laughs> We're so pleasant, uh, blessed to have Janet and Craig Parcel with us today. Amen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for to be coming. Here. Good, to, good to, Great be back. to be here. Leaving, um, I thought you were in Washington. I know now you're in the Shenandoah Valley. So yes. it must take a lot to get you out of there. They have to pry us out. <laughs> Actually, it took us a lot to get us out of Washington. We got in our car. This is a true story one day, and we said, how long and how far can we drive from Washington and still keep our jobs? And we ended up in the valley. Is that how you really? did it? Truly, truly. Oh, wow. <laughs> Does your cell, you know, of course, cell phones work. You know. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful part of Virginia. It is, oh. it is. But as Thomas Hardy said, it's far from the matting crowd. Real people don't want to really live in Washington. <laughs> okay. You work there, but you want to get out of the city. But our work still takes us back into the city on a regular basis. So. Mm. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. You, both of you guys are involved actively Craig, you're involved as, as the attorney for the NRB, mm -hmm. and you're also you're an author and a speaker. Uh, what, what do you spend your, your time doing mostly? You, you know, the majority of my time, Don, is spent going in and out of Washington, D.C., and having the privilege to talk to government leaders and folks in the Federal Communications Commission. That, those are the five individuals that basically set the rules for everything that happens here in terms of television, radio, and now even the Internet. And what we do is simply remind them about the importance of Christian broadcasting, Christian television, Christian radio, and make sure that the doors stay open and don't get closed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Protect those freedoms. That's right. The, the, the freedoms to tell the truth about the gospel. Yep. That's right. And, yep. and that, mm -hmm. that's a precious commodity, obviously. Uh, every broadcaster, uh, secular or Christian, believes that their content is important. But we have heavenly content. Mm -hmm. We have content that changes people's Amen. lives and impacts their eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, Janet, I, I, I listen to you, so I, it's, it's kind of hard for me to ask you what you do, because <laughs> I, I know what you do. <laughs> but t tell, our, tell our family that are watching what you do. Well, I have the privilege of doing radio every day. Uh, it's uh, syndicated through Moody Radio, and it airs on about 700 stations across the country, literally from Hawaii to Alaska to the Virgin Islands. And the premise of the program, and by the way, doesn't it work out well that I do radio and he works at NRB? Yeah. So he keeps yeah. those doors open so yeah. I can do what I got to do. Yeah. It does. And, and I love it because Craig said that when God made us, he split the same Adam. Half was Craig and half was me. So that oh. worked out all together. Oh, but great. what we try to do is to take what's in that word and apply it to our lives every day. You know, we amen on Sunday morning and then Monday comes and we get the headlines of the day and we kind of get panicky and think, oh my goodness, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And we fail to realize that that word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Mm -hmm. And everything that's happening in the world today makes sense when it's looked at through the lens of scripture. So we really call it applied Christianity. Well, I'm glad you said that because that was one of my questions for you today. Because when we look at the headlines today, we hear, we see a lot about Syria. We see a lot about the uh, yes. conflict in the Middle East. Yes. How do you see that? And how do we get peace with, with those kinds of headlines? Well, that's a great question. And you start first with saying to our brothers and sisters in the Lord, and that's to whom I would direct this, care. It's real easy for a lot of people to say, ah, it's an over there problem, what do I care? I mean, I don't live in Syria, it's not my issue, I don't have to be involved, wait, wait, wait. Let's step into that classroom with Paul, who was lecturing his young student, Timothy, and he told us to pray for those in authority. That means you don't have to agree with them, you don't have to belong to the same party, but we need to petition wisdom, grace, mercy, insight into the decisions that they're going to make, and these are weighty, hefty decisions. Now, why should we care? Mm -hmm. We should care because we care about the, the whole truth of the whole gospel to the whole world. I'm particularly concerned about Syria for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm particularly concerned about what's happening to our Christian brothers and sisters there. My sources in Syria tell me that our Christian brothers and sisters are particularly concerned about the rebels, not Bashar Assad, but about the rebels, because the rebels are going after the Christians. In fact, yesterday, 23 miles outside of Damascus, there was an attack on a Christian village, and they were shouting, Allahu Akbar, before they went in, and went to the believers and said, you will convert or die, and threatened them with beheading, if in fact they didn't convert to Islam. Now that's my first concern, is for our family, our brothers and sisters. But I'm also concerned, because I don't want anybody to go into eternity without knowing Jesus as their personal savior. So I don't want anybody to perish. And the Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. So what we should be praying for is peace in that region, how that looks, 
how that'll be done, I don't know. God raises up kings and princes and rulers who are gonna make those kinds of decisions. You and I won't be in the position to do it, but we can bang on the gates of heaven for those who do have to make the decisions for the sake of the gospel, if for no other reason. See, isn't that, isn't that the central point? Yes. Isn't the yes. central point God's kingdom and his kingdom being revealed in this age? You know, that, <laughs> that's why it's so terribly important for people to be watchers on the wall, to watch the horizon, to look for the signs of the times. Remember Jesus uh, rebuking the Pharisees, mm -hmm. saying, you know, you know how to predict the weather by looking at the clouds. If you're a sailor, you know when it's good time to sail and when it's bad time. Mm -hmm. Why don't you recognize me as the penultimate, the ultimate sign of the time? But also, I think that goes for the church now, to be watchers, to be alert. How many times does the Apostle Paul say, be on the alert? So that means that we have to be watchful, get God's big picture from his great word, and then apply it to what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think a, a lot of times folks like us, we don't know how to get involved. You know, we see it and you're right. It's so far away. Right. And it's like, well, it doesn't apply to me, but if just prayer has a lot of impact and there are probably other ways that they can help or get involved exactly. and, and, and uh, make a difference. We all have a purpose in you know, that. Our, our propensity is to be very belly button oriented. You know, it, what, how does it affect me personally? Mm -hmm. But really and truly, if you go to John 3:16, which we all know and love and quote, for God so loved the world, it doesn't get any more inclusive than that. But here's the exclusive part of the statement, that whosoever believed in him, his son Jesus, wouldn't perish but would have everlasting life. So even if we don't understand the Alawites and the Sunnis and the Christians and that Britain set the borders and made this mulligan stew of people groups there were there and there really is this tribal relationship mm -hmm. and we don't understand the warring factions, here's what we know. Mm -hmm. How do you change a terrorist? you introduce him to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate answer. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed so many former terrorists mm -hmm. who have come to faith in Jesus Christ. They grew up, they had to learn to hate. No mother in Lebanon or Syria or Egypt says, congratulate us, we've had a hater. You have to teach your child to be a hater. But that hate can be dramatically transformed because of the completed work of the cross. So it is for the sake of the cross, we mm -hmm. should be involved. Mm -hmm. And with that as a backdrop, with the idea, Craig, where you were at, that these are the end days yes. and that we're watching God unveil his plan. We know that the Bible tells us clearly mm. what that kind of, what that plan looks like, what the yes. kingdom and how the kingdom changes. Why are we shocked when we start seeing those rufflings, that rumors of that war truth? and mm -hmm. rustling yes. of, of, of strife? Why is that sh shock Christians? Well, it, number one, uh, we've all seen the mosaic where the tiny little pieces are put together. In fact, the times that Janet and I traveled to Israel and the Middle East, uh, they're great mosaic works throughout history that you can enjoy. But when you stand back, you get the picture. If you get too close mm -hmm. to any one set of pieces, you miss the big picture. The big picture is in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That gives us the landscape. Mm -hmm. That gives us the instruction manual mm -hmm. and the map. Now, why are we surprised? Because we are in those little pieces every day. We're doing the things that God's called us to do, raising our families, going to our job, paying our taxes, uh, dealing with our, our friends and our neighbors and our communities. But we need to remember to keep the big picture, the big picture, and ultimately it's about God's love for the world and his having sent Christ, and therefore we have a reason to be in the world now. Mm -hmm. And fear is not part of our equation, no, is it? No. no. You know, it, it, the longer Janet and I walk with the Lord, the more we remind ourselves that it, it gets down to two simple options when you feel anxious or afraid. It's either fear or faith. That's right. 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 That's right. Well, I, I see two exciting books. Which one are we going to talk about first? We've got just a minute. The, Janet, yours is the newest? Yeah, Buyer Beware, right. Uh, I, what I did is I took a look at what happened to the Israelites when they went into the Babylonian captivity. Mm -hmm. They lived in a sin-sick, fallen pagan world. Sound familiar? Yes. Yes. Well, so what does God do? He sends them a letter by way of Jeremiah in chapter 29, and he says, not only are you going to survive, you're going to thrive, and that book tells them and us how we thrive in a sin-sick, fallen world. Absolutely. I, 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 I'm excited about the truth in the marketplace of ideas. Mm -hmm. An interesting way for us to understand where we live and what the uh, what the volume is like, and and then Craig, yours is this is this a, a tell us about about the book. Well, I had a privilege of working with my good friend Tim LaHaye. Um, this is actually the, the Brick of Chaos is the third in uh, the end series, and as you can tell, it's uh, kind of a futuristic view of how things might get bad and what would it look like from the American standpoint if things really get bad in the next few years, and the uh, brink of chaos is number three, what happens to freedom to an American family who are people of faith, 
what happens and how do they live successfully and uh, seek God's will in the midst of a crazy, crazy chaotic world. And then book number four, Mark of Evil, is coming out beginning of next year. That's the last in the series. We're, oh, wow. we're going to have you back to talk about how a couple stays so busy and is so productive mm -hmm. and keeps the family focused too. Because you have children and... Four children, six grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It helps when you marry at six. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, 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 that was something, unfortunately, we didn't do. No. <laughs> no. Thank you for coming on to Real Life and Thank talking you, to us about Pleasure being with you both. the news you. and about what God's teaching you. And we're going to take a break. We'll, we'll, we'll be back in just a minute. We uh, talked about prayer a few minutes ago. And so I want to take a look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. If you've got your Bible, why don't you go ahead and open it up. 1 Timothy chapter 2. That's the Apostle Paul speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit about something we were just mentioning a minute ago. Number one, the importance of prayer. Now it's interesting, if you look at the first couple verses in chapter 2, that Paul reminds us not just to be people of prayer, but couple our prayer with thanksgiving. That's important. And one of the things we can be thankful for in the United States of America is the fact that we have a constitutional republic. It is the public uh, that runs the country through our elected officials. We no longer have a monarch. We don't have leaders who are uh, masters. We have leaders in Washington, D.C. who are our public servants. So that triggers an obligation and a privilege, a high privilege, on the part of the Christian church and believers in Christ. So let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and see what the Apostle Paul has to say about what we ought to be doing with these tremendous freedoms that God has blessed us with. If we look at the, the first few verses, of course, we see the privilege of praying, and he doesn't set, Paul doesn't set limitations on who we should pray for. He said pray for everyone. Some translations say pray for every man. But that means without limitation without hesitation, without discrimination. There should be no one that we are unwilling to pray for because as we'll see in a minute, it's all tied into God's perfect and great design for good government and also building his kingdom. Now, Apostle Paul says that we should pray for our kings and those in authority. We no longer have a king, of course, no longer monarchs, but public servants in Washington, D.C. and in your local city, your city council, uh, your county government and your state government as well. We should pray for them on a regular basis. We should pray for them because Paul reminds us that if we do so, God's great design for good government is that the church should be able to live peaceful and quiet lives so that we as believers in Christ can live in holiness, live appropriate lives and pursue our ministry and our obligation and our high commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's not just for our comfort that we are given this obligation to pray and this privilege to seek good government? No. No, if we look at verse 4, we see this is tied in to God's master plan to bring people into salvation, into his family. And so he says, Paul, in verse 4, God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So in other words, if we pray fervently and pray for good government and pray for our leaders and pray for them to have wisdom and make wise decisions, it will not only bless the church, but then the church will be free to be the church and influence those who don't know Christ and bring them into the family of God. Now, not just prayer, but I believe the Bible also speaks to action. Christians should be actively involved in influencing their government for good. We could use a couple examples. Uh, first of all, we need to know what God's design for government is. Well, you look at Romans chapter 13. Paul tells us that basically the, the design for government is by God's own design to promote good and restrain evil. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Peter says the same thing in 2 Peter 3, 9. So we know that. Now, sometimes we're called upon, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, to expose evil and certainly not participate in the deeds of darkness. As a matter of fact, in, in uh, Philippi, when 
Paul was arrested. He was arrested illegally because he was a Roman citizen. Rights of Roman said that he was entitled to a trial, but he had no trial, arrested illegally. But he brought the jailer in Philippi to a knowledge of Christ along with his entire household. But then he objected directly to the magistrates who had uh, caused him to be illegally arrested. So he influenced that corrupt and pagan system of government, reminding them what their duties were. Now there's also an opportunity in Scripture to see those that positively influenced leaders. You look at the Old Testament, folks like Joseph and Daniel and Esther and many, many others, those that had access to the corridors of power and were able to directly influence even pagan leaders with the Spirit of God and lead them to wise decisions. Now, you and I may not have that kind of access to our national leaders, but we do have access to our leaders through the power of electronic communication, by email, by telephone, or even by letter writing. We can pray and we can communicate with them those values that we hold dear. If we're silent, the vacuum will be filled by those who do not follow the Word of God. But if we're active in influencing our leaders, both with our prayer and our action and our influence, then God's great design for good government, I believe, will be fulfilled. These are momentous times. These are times for us to be on our knees in prayer with thanksgiving and then to get up from our knees and to be actively involved at whatever sphere of influence God has called you to impact your government. Don? Amen. Amen. We're called to impact our government because our government is us. So let's take a break, a break and we'll come back and we'll go to prayer. Well, looky here. It's Lucy Nethel on the phone. Again and again. Wonder what they're talking about. They sure do look like they're having fun. Uh-oh, looks like Ricky is wondering why Lucy is always on the phone. What is that in his hand? It's a phone bill. And if it's huge, Lucy will have a lot of explaining to do. But wait, there is no phone bill because Lucy and Ethel are Cornerstone Television prayer partners at home. Just look at Lucy and Ethel. They are so happy talking to their prayer calls that come directly to their home phone or even their new fangled cell phone. Do you want to join Lucy and Ethel and become a part of Cornerstone Television's prayer partners at home? You can have a great time splaining the love of God to those needing a prayer. Call us at 1-866-798-4104 and become a part of Cornerstone Television's prayer partners at home with Lucy, Ethel, and Ricky. Splain in the love of God. Tomorrow on Real Life, we remember the events of 9-11 with the story of a woman who was in the World Trade Center during the attack. When we would get bad weather, you know, you could actually feel the office moving, but it wasn't like that. It was a jolt. And I thought, what is going on? And I, I looked out my window, and at that time, I saw just huge chunks of big black something. I couldn't tell what it was and meet the ladies of Sister to Sister. Topics, opinions, and a fresh perspective. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Welcome back. We're here at the prayer altar. We're going to come to go to the Lord with your prayer request. Uh, you still have time to call it in, 888-665-4483, and put your prayer request on the table, on the altar. We're, we're, we're focusing today on, on uncertainty and fear and if you don't, and we all have it, we all have it. 
Don't feel like you're the only one that has concerns about the future. We all share those concerns. But God wants to take those from you, and He wants you to have peace. Mm-hmm. God's a God of peace. Yes. He's not a God of fear. He's mm-hmm. a God of faith. And that's... that's Terry, you had a question in the break. I want, why don't you ask Janet well, a question? Well, I have some uncertainty. I have teenagers, and, and I'm just not sure about how the Internet and the church and um, what I should be concerned about in terms of the Internet and what is on there and what does the government's role, that's, my, that's a concern I have. What, what is ahead of me and what do I see right now? You, you know, the Internet can be a scary place. It can also be a blessed place. Uh, mm-hmm. Janet and I see all the time how ministries have used it powerfully to get the gospel out. On the other hand, there are some traps for unwary mm-hmm. parents. Yeah. There are a lot of organizations out there uh, involving Christian uh, leaders and others who are very savvy about the Internet. I'm on the board of one in particular, Enough is Enough is the name of it, but there are several others. And they help design protocols and systems and programs for, ch- for parents and children to teach them how to install the right programs in their Internet service, whether it's a laptop or uh, an iPad, mm-hmm. how to protect their children, and then uh, be able to use those systems to protect their children and make the parents more savvy about where those dangers are. Can I do a 30-second amendment to that as well? And that is mm-hmm. I just interviewed a father-daughter psychology team who talked about the chemistry of the brain that literally changes the more time our kids spend in the internet. Now that's a red flag for me as a mom. Yes. So mom to mom, you asked about one of the things to be concerned right. about. Here's the paradox. Why do we call it social media when it's the most isolating thing they it, will do? It is. Go out and play ball. Go talk Absolutely. to your friend. Go have lunch. Go shake mm-hmm. somebody's hand and write a letter. So I think it's good. I love it because now I can email a missionary when it used to take 10 days or two right. weeks to get a letter mm-hmm. to that's the mission right. field. Mm-hmm. So I love the advantage for the proclamation of the gospel, but I think it become it can become a God. It can become an idol. It can become such an obsession in our lives that Mm -hmm. we as moms and dads, I think, have to negotiate the usage. It's value neutral in terms of the technology, but I think we have to be overseers Mm -hmm. and they need to be good stewards of their time on this. That's that's good work. There's a lot of people asking for money on the internet, a lot of scams, a lot of things going Mm -hmm. on, being able to sort it all out. And uh, that's that's really a challenge. Mm -hmm. That's for another day. But the internet and money a lot, a lot going. In fact, you can have your bank account. The, the theft today isn't somebody walking in the lobby with a gun. It's cleaning you out. Did, over did you the get the thirty-five so, million from Hong Kong? That's right. Yeah. I, I'm still waiting for still mine. Still waiting for that. Mine's coming from Africa. <laughs> Africa. And you, you may have even heard there, there is a digital currency being yep. created yep. called the Bitcoin, yep. where you can trade. Yep on the internet and never use currency that's recognized by any country. And there's a tendency to believe in all this stuff and think it's a positive thing, but without digging into it, uh, the, the bad guys work in full time. Don't, don't yeah. have any And that's why it. we, it's important to pray and to remember that we don't have to be fearful. Amen. Well, that's, 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 that's how I want to close yeah. this segment is mm-hmm. the Bible's clear. It says, greater is he that's in me than he who's in this world. Yes, yes. Now the world does have all these tricks and the enemy comes at you at all kinds of angles, but one thing that you need to be certain of, if you know Jesus Christ as your savior and you've accepted his love, then you don't have to be concerned. You can turn it loose. And if you don't know Jesus, we wanna to talk to you about how to accept Christ, how to find him as your savior and Lord, because that's, that's the first step towards abundant life. Mm-hmm. And then the next step, and the next step, it, the Christian walk isn't static. It doesn't just happen one time. It keeps going forward. Mm-hmm. You need to keep moving. You need to study to show yourself mm-hmm. approved. But we're here to pray. We're praying for you. If you send in a prayer request, we're gonna take this time right now. We're gonna lay hands on these prayer requests mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. And we're gonna pray for God's touch upon each of these people. And Jen, I'd like to ask if you would lead us in this prayer. I'd be happy to. Mm-hmm. Gracious Heavenly Father, how do we say thank you for a king who gives us access to the throne of grace you, anytime, Jesus. anywhere, any day. Father, as we've been talking this hour in various aspects about the nature of fear, please help us to remember that you have not given us a spirit of fear, yes, God. but of power, love and have a sound mind. Father, we receive all of that from you. And as we see the various prayer requests, so many people worrying about their jobs, so many people worrying about their finances, so many people struggling with their health. Father, please help us to understand this, particularly with all of these prayer requests and what it must look like in front of the throne. We see so many here. What does it look like before you? But you hear and you care and you listen and you answer. And here's what we know, whatever these prayer requests are, Father, nothing has happened in our life 
that hasn't been vetted in the throne room of yes. heaven first. Yes, you have allowed it into our lives for a purpose. Perhaps mm -hmm. in the darkness and in the valley, we will see you more clearly than we've ever seen you yes, before. Mm -hmm. So help us not to be afraid, even if things look dark, even if there's not money in our checking account, even if our job ends yes, at God. the end of the week, even if that diagnosis isn't good, you are in control. Hallelujah. Power, love, Hallelujah. sound yes, mind, Lord. all Amen. of those things are your gifts, yes. Father thank God. You, Jesus. So we thank you that in our Hallelujah. weakness and in our woundedness that we can come to you and know that you say that we can crawl up on your lap and you'll, lap, you'll wrap your everlasting arms of love around us and that yes, no matter what happened this morning, we woke up knowing that your tender mercies were renewed, that your grace was sufficient and that nothing and no one can separate us from your love. That makes us a very rich people indeed, Hallelujah. Father God. And we thank you for that. Thank, thank you, you for Jesus. hearing these prayers. Thank you for answering these prayers. Father, whether they were short or long spoken in the pre dawn hours or in the middle of a commute this morning. You heard it thank all you, and you care and you mm. answer. And we thank you, Father, yes. for being a God who above all else is a Amen. God of unfailing yes. love. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank Amen. You. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Your God loves you and we love you and we're so blessed that you were part of today's program. Thank tomorrow, we, have a, we do it all over again. Right. So come back tomorrow morning. God bless you. Oh